Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I am going to uh, hand it off in a couple of moments uh, to uh, Susie, who is going to uh, open up with a Dvar Torah and take us into the presentation for tonight. Uh, before we do, I just wanted to uh, thank you all both for tonight, but also for your incredible uh, patience uh, and compassion. Um, I know that, um, you know, as we released our blueprint, we were all uh, incredibly hopeful about our return to campus. Um, and, um, and then everything, um, you know, came out from the county. Uh, there's still a lot going on. Uh, we are following it, uh, not just day by day, but hour by hour. There's still a lot going on between county and state. Um, we've got uh, task forces and many people working on it. We are uh, still very uh, hopeful. We, we, uh, our preschool is opening. Uh, we are very hopeful. We still have to take some steps, but we are hopeful that our kindergarten will be back on campus as well. Um, I've already uh, been in touch with the county and submitted our plans. Uh, we are still confident with the plans that we put together and that we've shared out with you, uh, but we are taking steps to uh, get our students back to campus uh, as soon as possible. Um, you know, but, um, you know, so I know that tonight's town hall was going to be focused on, uh, on the blueprint and our return to campus. Um, but uh, for tonight's purposes and where we are, we're obviously going to be sharing a lot with you in terms of um, how we are going to uh, pivot and reopen school uh, for the first few weeks until we can get there. Um, so I'm going to hand it off to Susie. So thank you again for your patience and thank you for being with us tonight. And I'm going to hand it off to Susie to, uh, to get us started. Thank you very much. Um, welcome everybody. It is my pleasure to welcome you all here tonight. I'm gonna to start with um, just a thought. Um, I recently actually was reading a book by Dr. Erica Brown about leadership. And in that book, she speaks about the fact that so many of our biblical leaders started their journeys as shepherds and either parallel to their leadership or before they became leaders of our people, they started out as shepherds. And she um, mentions that it's an outstanding metaphor for leadership because of the skills required to be a shepherd. And if you think about being a shepherd, um, in order to be a successful shepherd, you need to be flexible and adaptable to change in terrain and in weather. Um, and you also need to be possessive and territorial of your flock, protecting them um, and guiding them into what you hope will be a healthy and nurturing pasture. So um, successful shepherds, as our, our forefathers and mothers were, um, sometimes had to voyage into um, unchartered pasture and they wandered in first ahead of their flock and into sometimes the unexpected. Um, and it spoke to me as we wander now together with you and our teachers um, ahead of our children into this um, uncharted territory that we're in right now with our pandemic. Um, and the, the other thing that I think really resonates for me as a shepherd is this idea that, you know, when you are out in the great wide world as a shepherd, you hope that this serene space out in the world also offers you um, some humility and a sense that you're quite small and insignificant in the world. And so, and that also speaks to me because we, we made great plans and we worked very hard to make plans to reopen. And here we are um, feeling kind of small and insignificant because the plans that we made are not being actualized just yet. So um, thank you again for being with us tonight. Let's see. Oh, there we are. Um, okay, so I want to welcome you. Um, I realize that tonight might be your first welcome into our beautiful lower school family. So for some people, this might be your welcome into our lower school family. And to you, we give a very special welcome. Um, some of our new kindergarten families are here and just some new Berman families as well. So of course, this is not the way we want to welcome you. We want to welcome you in person with a big, you know, a big uh, hug and a smile, but we're going to do it this way. Um, so welcome to all of you. My name is Susie Israel, and I am one of the lower school principals. My colleague in the other half of the avocado over there is Rachel Handloff, and she will speak soon as well. My role here in the lower school is to oversee the educational elements of our program. 
um, and Rachel oversees all things that have to do with student life and a social emotional learning. And I think that part of why we divide our roles this way in our lower school is to, to underscore for our children that we believe that the, the educational elements, the curricular elements and the social emotional education are equally important for children at this developmental stage. So um, that's how we divide our, our, uh, our roles here. And if you're new to us, you'll get to know um, who we are and what we do. Um, as you know, our original iteration of what we were going to say here tonight was going to be about a live reopening of our canvas, and that has changed. So many of you submitted questions that pertain to the live reopening of our school. And so some of your questions were about live reopening, practical questions like, you know, how are we going to bring the backpacks in and what are we going to do about the bathroom? Um, and some of you gave us questions about the virtual um, reopening. So what I'm going to do tonight is to address primarily those questions that have to do with the virtual school setting because that's where we're starting and my commitment to you is that we will get back in front of you as we know when our live reopening data is and answer all of your questions that are particular to um, to the live to the live reopening we also wanted to let you know that because we are still working on our reopening for kindergarten we plan to have a separate and additional town hall that will address kindergarten and what the reopening of our kindergarten will look like so stay tuned for that um, I want to give you a sense of, of what our teachers do uh, at Berman, and I think that overall people who, people who think the teachers don't work in the summer don't know our lower school team. So first of all, I want to thank many of my colleagues in the lower school for being here tonight. It's so heartwarming to see you on the screen. Um, it, it feels really reassuring to see you there, so thank you for being there with me. Um, I want to express gratitude to our administrative team headed by Rabbi Dr. Kastan for helping us navigate through this crazy reality, um, as well as all of the principals who've been working tirelessly and Sarah and Ellie who, who are really our partners here too. I also want to take a minute to thank our lay leaders and board members, and especially those members of our medical task force who put in so many, many hours to set us up for success when we do reopen. And finally, we also want to thank the parents for trusting us to take your children's safety seriously. We take that trust very seriously. And, um, and as a result of that trust, I want to point your attention to these names on the screen. Um, I found myself trying to think about how are we going to translate all of the recommendations from the medical task force and the CDC into practical protocols for the lower school. So everything from, you know, how do you tie a little one's coat that's stuck in the winter if you're not supposed to come too close to them? And just all of the little questions about how do we navigate the lower school and how do we take all of these recommendations and translate them into a life in our lower school that's still going to feel loving and engaging and warm, which is something we've worked so hard to do. So I put out this note and I said, can anybody help me with this thing? Um, I want to look at the medical task force recommendations and make protocols for the lower school. And I said, it's actually in writing so, um, so people can laugh at me about it. I said, it'll take about five hours total. <laughs> so in the end, I think it took five hours a day for several weeks. But these are the people who jumped to, to jump into this madness with me. When I got there, they said, I said, I don't know, maybe it'll be a little more than five hours. And they said, yeah, we know. <laughs> so I want to tell you that within minutes, these people volunteered. And these teachers have dedicated many hours of their summer to really creating protocols that would make our re-entry into the lower school safe and also maintain the integrity of the beautiful warm space that we care so much about. Um, another thing that I want to show you is this is a legitimate list of all of the different professional development initiatives that our teachers have engaged in over the course of this summer. And many of the items that you see on this screen were um, were professional development initiatives that many teachers joined. So for example, today, yesterday, many, many of our teachers were engaged in a, um, a program about, um, that was particular to Zoom teaching for reading. So as soon as we started to realize we were starting out virtually, we pivoted a lot of our professional development to that platform. But a lot of the professional development that our teachers engaged in this summer was just next steps in good teaching for in school. So these are all things that our teachers have been doing this summer. Um, 
in an effort to continue to be well-trained and robust educators and in an effort to make sure that we had the sense we would have to pivot to virtual at some point. So um, those two things together. Um, I want you to have an opportunity to look at the schedule for our virtual reopening. I know that this is an important thing. Um, as we did in the past and in response to what you have expressed would be best for the children while they're home, we are starting at nine. And other than the start at nine rather than 8.15, the rest of the day should mirror very, very closely what we do in the school building. And it's really important to us as educators of little people to make sure that the day dovetails very well with the school day so that when, as soon as we do have permission to re-enter our building, our children will be ready to do that and the learning that they'll experience in the building will be very similar in terms of its structure um, to what they have online. Uh, you'll see that this day goes from 9 to 3.30 and some of the things I want to tell you about include that in this iteration of virtual Berman Lower School, you will, your children will experience more instructional hours, academic instructional hours than they did in the past. Um, our teachers were very um, involved in developing that. And actually, as recently as yesterday, one of our grade level meetings met and took a look at a schedule that was a tiny bit different than this one in one of the periods and said, no, let's, let's get live learning in there too. Um, so, they are advocating for being in front of your children in small groups as much as possible. Our groups are going to be smaller than they were in the past because we've, we've found ways to do that. So our groups are going to primarily be 10 or fewer children. And um, we will use our breakout rooms to address the needs of our children who need educational support. So those children who need specific educational support for learning needs that they have will have even smaller groups. But our children, our teachers will be engaged with your children in small groups for most of the day. I want to take a moment to just pause there and say it, it brings me great pride to tell you that our teachers feel strongly about being in live teaching with the, with the children all day, but it's hard. And I want, to, I want to take a moment to say that being that way in front of a screen for such a long day is really difficult and it's, a, it's, a, it's not what the teachers want to do. So I want to assure you that our teachers, they, they are prioritizing the safety of the children and honestly of, of the adults in the school, but this is not easy teaching. And I, I want to promise you that it is not the type of teaching that we trained for or wished for when we started doing this. Um, also in response to feedback we've received from you, we will continue our policy of having no assigned homework in virtual school. That said, I want you to look at the end of the day where we have a 15 minute turn it in time, where we are going to ask for children to turn things in that either they've started with us during the day and a teacher will be there, especially with our lower elementary to help them turn it in, but we will, we will train them to how, as to how to turn those assignments into us. We do want to be receiving more of their assignments so that we can, that we can really monitor their progress. Um, so that's what that's about, and we will be there to, to help them with that. We also plan to do a town hall for our children, um, for our bigs and for our littles, as we've done in the past. And we will, at that town hall, we'll set them up with the expectations for the school day and we'll start to give them an understanding of what those setups should be to make them the most successful and just as you're thinking about that again i think the thing that's the most the most physically important piece would be that space for learning and that doesn't mean that everybody needs to go buy a pretty desk from pottery barn that means you know that your children have a space where they can keep their supplies and their materials, where every day they return to that space and they know that that's their school space. Having that space as opposed to seeing children wandering around with a laptop um, makes all the difference in terms of our ability to instruct them and in terms of their ability to, to gain from our instruction. So there's a little plug for a learning space. Okay. Um, we've also made some improvements to technology based on what you've told us and based on what our teachers have told us. The first thing I want you to know is that 
some teachers and parents expressed that it was very challenging to to see which children had a question right so a lot of times if i'm sharing my screen as i am right now i only see tiny icons of the people on the side and i only see a few at a time when i'm sharing my screen like this and so what happened was you might have had a, a little boy or girl in your house who was waving at the teacher but the teacher had a piece of pedagogical material on the screen and so they couldn't see your child waving so what we've done is we've um, we've arranged to get a second monitor for our teachers to keep at home so that they can have one monitor with the zoom screen for the children and a second monitor for the materials that they're sharing in their screen share and I think that should really make a difference for us on a similar in a similar vein for our first and second graders, we are going to be lending iPads to them. And I want to, I want to give you a sense of what that means. We have done a lot of work and the teachers have done a lot of training to prepare for um, using iPads and online apps to teach and to measure progress. But what we'd like to do is loan an iPad to every first and second grader because those are going to be, that, that will be the platform on, upon which they will do some of their schoolwork, but it will not be their Zoom platform. So when we lend you the iPad, that iPad will not be where they join our Zoom screen. The iPad will be for doing their schoolwork. So we're going to lend that to you, but first and second graders should arrive at virtual school with a device from your home, plus the iPad that we lend them for school. Okay, so I hope, to, I hope that that makes sense. Um, that will be used for online app instruction. In the first week of school, our teachers are going to be available at, for a parent help desk, and they'll be available after school to answer your questions online, and we will, we will post for you the Zoom links and the times for that, of course, in the first week of school. So if you have questions about how to get your kids logged in or what to do um, to, to download your information that you need to check how your kids are doing, we will be available and teachers will be part of um, helping you navigate that. Um, we ask that you please check your home Wi-Fi. There is nothing more upsetting for a teacher than to be in a Zoom room with a child who cannot be understood. So the way that I want to encourage you to check your Wi-Fi is during, you know, in the middle of the day, I think it, from what I've from what I've heard, it makes a difference whether it's daytime or nighttime. So in the middle of the day, when our school will be on, I'd like you to sort of set up a bunch of different devices in your house and start playing video and see how it goes. Because if it's not enough Wi-Fi, we lose connection with the children and it's very, very challenging to teach them when they have spotty connection. And it's frustrating for the kids also. So we ask you to check that. And also um, we have put out a supply list for homeschool and for live school and in our um, zoom school supply list we put um, a pair of headphones with a microphone so we're hoping that that will serve two purposes first of all to um, drown out ambient noise for the child from the home and also to help us better hear the children so we're hoping that that will make a difference um, those are not too expensive and some families when we had some Wi-Fi issues when they contacted their Wi-Fi carrier it was like a $20 bump in their Wi-Fi service to get a little bit better bandwidth in the house so it wasn't a super expensive thing but that does make a very big difference so I ask you to take a look at that please okay some of you had some very legitimate questions about assessments we ended our school year with uh, a lot of virtual school and we wonder ourselves where our children are after that end to a school year and then summer where we usually see a little bit of drop off in terms of the retention of materials and we expect that um, so we are going to spend some time at the beginning of the year doing assessments our educational support staff will do reading assessments on every single child so we'll listen to them read and we will know where they are when we get them and we will also do an end of year, last year's end of year math benchmarking assessment, um, coupled with some online assessments. I want to make a strong plug here for you to please not help your children with these assessments. I know it's hard and sometimes kids will ask for help. Um, and I know if you walk by a child and they're making a mistake, it's hard and I get it because a mom and a dad, all you want to do is help your child when they're struggling. 
but a plug on behalf of the educators of the school, we need to know when there are things that they don't know. So I know that some of you were helpful last year and we had to restart your kids in their assessments because we ended up with data that wasn't helpful to us. So I lovingly ask you to let them struggle through those assessments. It's important that I know if your child does not know how to do long division so that we can teach it to them. You know, this was not going off to Harvard and Cornell. This is just for us so that we know where we need to fill in the holes. So I thank you in advance for that. Um, okay. Um, finally, I'm going to talk about communication here. Um, we are going to change it up a little bit. We are continuing to use the Seesaw app for kindergarten through third grade. And in fourth and fifth grade, we're moving to Google Classroom. Google Classroom is what they'll use in the middle school, and we think it might be more appropriate for what we do in fourth and fifth grade because they do engage in Google Apps for Education. They do a lot of writing in Google Docs and so on. So um, we will be offering um, we will be offering a little bit of parent training on the Seesaw app and the Google Classroom as well, closer to the beginning of school. The Seesaw app, I encourage every single one of you to stay engaged with the Seesaw app, especially all year, but especially when we're in school. It offers you a, a peek, a real view into what your children are learning. Now, granted, you're going to have a real view right now anyway, but it's going, to, it's going to give you a sense of what the children are turning in and what the teacher's response is to what they turn in. So it is just, it's a really lovely way for you to engage with the teacher um, about the learning of the children. We are also going to facilitate, and Rachel will talk a little bit more about this, the your receiving of workbooks and textbooks. I know you asked about that also. So we will make sure that before school starts, we get those handed over to you. And um, we, we are going to make every effort to get you the handouts in advance so that you're not printing day to day. I know that the printing was not easy. We <laughs> We appreciate, I see happy faces. We appreciate the efforts that you made. We still need you to have a printer. <laughs> so um, we appreciate the efforts that you made to print uh, every time. And we, we give ourselves um, a little bit of slack there because we didn't know we were gonna be doing this, but now we know that we're doing it. So we, we have asked all of the teachers to imagine forward, you know, everything that you're going to need for the next you know five or six weeks and to start to prepare those in packets so by and large all the teachers are on board with this and by and large you will receive those um so thank you for for letting us know that that was something that was an area of frustration for you and we are we are doing our best to fix that for you um so and then again we're going to invite the children to a town hall to lovingly set them up for success and give them um, a warm embrace, as well as some parameters for their comportment on this virtual platform. There are some families who asked about um, making sure that children can't go on other apps while they're in Zoom school. And there are ways for you to, you can look up ways for you to pin particular websites and block other websites while your children are in Zoom school. So if that's something that you want to do, you certainly can do that. Um, we feel pretty confident, and, I, and I, I ran this by the teachers this week, because our class groupings that we've made for virtual school are so small, we feel pretty confident that your children will not have much opportunity to wander away from us. Um, when I'm looking at five or six or seven children and I've got a screen for the work and a screen with just their faces, we're gonna see it if they're not on with us. So I'm hoping it'll make a difference too. Again, I thank you all for your trust in us and your kindness as we navigate this. We so look forward to having your children back in the building with us. I am gonna turn it over to my partner in all of this, Rachel Hanloff, who does an incredible job helping our children through the social emotional um, portions of our school. Thank you, Susie. <laughs> so as Susie said earlier in the presentation that we, you know, we, we have this partnership and because we believe in the, the equal space being dedicated to our a robust academic program and also the social emotional well-being of our students. And now, even more so, we want to continue on that path of supporting our students' uh, social emotional health. And we have a few initiatives in place to, to do that. The first is we still have our 
our fabulous lower school counselor, Mr. Zach. He, all of the students will have an opportunity through virtual school to meet with uh, Mr. Zach in small groups and have a chance to dialogue, share with him how things are going, share their frustrations, share the things that they like, and they'll have this chance to, to check in with him. He also will continue to be available for individual sessions. So if you have a child who's struggling through a particular issue or something doesn't seem right, you can reach out to Mr. Zach via email and set up a time for him to check in one-on-one -on -one with, with either you or your child or both. And I also wanna offer my own listening ear to a parent or child for whom this, this platform has been difficult or again, if there's something going on that you think that we should know about or that we can partner with you to, to figure out please reach out via email and I will set a time to, to speak with you uh, virtually, again, uh, either with you, with your child or both, whatever might work. And one of the new things that we're gonna do this year, again, in response to your feedback about uh, worrying that you're, you weren't sure how your child was doing or if they were struggling, we will assign every child a homeroom teacher and we're gonna use all of the teachers in our, in our professional staff and each teacher will have uh, possibly 8, 10, 12 students for whom they are designated as the homeroom teacher and that teacher will reach out to your child periodically to check in and see how things are going at <clears throat> and they can also serve as a conduit for you to get information from the grade level team about if your child is struggling in more than one place. Uh, so we're hoping that the homeroom teacher will help uh, keep everybody feel connected and it will give your child an opportunity to get to know another adult in the building uh, in a special way, much like they would if they were doing a fun shop when we're in school or if they connect with a recess teacher because that's who's out at recess. One of the most important parts of our program and what I think brings so much joy to our students and our teachers when we're in school are all of the programming that we do and we want to continue to do that programming even in the virtual platform so we will continue to offer oneg once a week on fridays at that last period of the day uh, rabbi pepper works tirelessly to promote though to present and prepare those programs we will again offer a a monthly field a virtual field trip where we will invite the the whole lower school to go on a virtual field trip and Rabbi Pepper is also working on some community building programs. So if you, if you think back on Lagba Omer last year, we did do some grade level uh, Zoom games and competitions. And that we, for that day, we sort of set aside some academic time and put in the community building and bonding for the different grade levels. And we will continue to do that. And I believe the first set of those programs will happen the week right before Rosh Hashanah. We will continue to celebrate our classroom celebrations. So if you're in first grade, you will have a Sidur party. If you're in second grade, you will have a Humash party. We're going to, to continue with those milestone events that happen in the lower school. And depending on where we are with virtual school or in-person school, we will adapt the programs to those platforms uh, as soon as we can learn more about uh, where we will be. And the last thing I wanna tell you about is we will continue to offer our full complement of specials and some additional ones. So in first and second grade, uh, kindergarten has always had music. We're adding it in first and second grade. There will be a, a live teacher, Maura Edna, will be teaching first and second grade music. So all of our students will have access to Maura Edna's fabulous music, uh, musical abilities. Uh, Mrs. Sachs will continue with her art lessons. Uh, we have a new science teacher. His name is uh, Rich Munns. Mr. Munns will teach science. Coach Jay, and I guess we're going to call him um, Coach Singer, <laughs> will uh, be teaching lower school gym. Uh, I think I mentioned that one of the specials will be this guidance time with Mr. Zach. We will continue to offer recess clubs where we'll have a teacher who supervises the students during break times so that if they want to hang out with their peers, um, play with the Zoom filters, play with their backgrounds, chit chat, that will be the appropriate time for that and it will be monitored by a, a teacher. And lastly, we do have, we will have library as a special in first through third grade and our fourth and fifth grade students will have access to 
library and research skills in the media center through their language arts curriculum. So they'll be able to, to build their skills at, for library at that time. Uh, a couple of these, we do setting your students up for success and starting to talk about school and arranging your workspace are all things that um, will help your child start on the right foot. A lot of things on our steps for success list, Mrs. Israel has already talked about. And I don't want to, um, I don't want to, uh, to repeat myself or waste your time. So I'm going to move on to the first week of school and some of the logistics that I'm sure you're interested to know about and are important. So the first is class placements. We are working tirelessly to make appropriate class placements that set your child up for both academic and social success. We are working to get you those lists no later than Tuesday, August 25th. We take uh, our teachers from the current grade level, work very hard to make the groups for the following year. We also take into consideration any requests that you might have made uh, when we send out that form in the springtime. If for some reason we aren't able to honor our request, I will be reaching out to you in the next week or two to discuss the status of your child's class placement if we think it's going to be something that you might be disappointed in. So we also, uh, as long as we have the appropriate uh, permissions, we're hoping to set up some uh, in-person, very small teacher meet and greets so that your child can meet their teacher face to face. Uh, we, we, of course, can do that virtually, but we're hoping uh, to get the right approvals to do that in person. And as we get closer to that being a reality, we will send an email uh, with a full schedule of how that will be accomplished. Um, regarding the schedule of school, we are now going to call August 31st. We used to have the Great Backpack Unpack. We're going to come up with some new clever name, but on August 31st, that will be the day where you will drive by school. Uh, with an opportunity to pick up all of the textbooks and printouts and workbooks and things that your child will need to be set up to start school. And the first day of virtual school will be Tuesday, September 1st. That week, we will have school on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. In the in-person schedule that we sent out, we had originally thought that that Friday would be a professional day. That is no longer the case. We will have uh, four full days of virtual school starting on Tuesday, September 1st. <clears throat> and again, I, we are going to uh, do the best we can to have some in-person activities that focus on social emotional well-being and build community amongst the students as soon as we have the parameters for what those programs can look like. And again, I want to appreciate your flexibility and patience as we iron out all the details of what virtual school will look like. And I, I believe that we have an opportunity now, if we didn't answer any of your questions, if you put a uh, question in the chat, Sarah will graciously pass them um, on to us and we can uh, work through a couple more of those questions. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Um, I think that I did an okay job answering questions as they were coming in to me, um, but there are a couple that came up that um, came up consistently, so I just wanted to pass them over. One question is, are the, are the specials during the day, are they optional? So I appreciate that question. We actually, the, the specials are not optional. We actually, I'm working very closely with our specials teachers. Those classes are gonna be offered in much smaller groups. And those teachers are planning engaging lessons for your children and we would like their participation. Uh, they will comp, you know, sometimes those specials complement the learning in the classroom. Often the specials teacher will partner with, uh, with the classroom teacher to, to, to work on a project that goes hand in hand with something that's happening in the academic, in the general studies or Limoday Kosh classroom. So please um, encourage your, you know, it's not optional. We would like, it's part of our school day and we expect them to attend. We also, there are um, breaks. There are two 20 minute breaks throughout the day. There's a lunch and recess block. So uh, we tried to spread those things out so your children would not be sitting in front of that screen all day. They have opportunities for movement to get up and move around. So please send them to specials. Thank you. 
Um, for summer assignments, will those be turned in on the first day of school, before school? Should kids still be working on them? Um, yes, the kids should still be working on them. The summer assignments are really a way for us to keep the kids engaged with some of the curricular initiatives and benchmarks that we work through with them over the school year. They're not just a way for us to punish the children. So they should be working with them and I think um, we're going to do what we generally do um, and not again not everybody's been with us before but what we generally do is that we send out a Google um, a form that says my child has completed and then we just ask you we we use the honor system and we I mean, we ask you to just let us know which um, items your child has completed when we are in live school, a lot of children like to carry their summer assignments into school and hand them to their teacher from the year before who assigned them or hand them to me. And we always love to make a fuss of them when they do. This year, we won't have the opportunity to do that, but we usually use that, um, that form to, to know that the children have completed them and then we invite them to a little ice cream party or something. Um, I think that our plan this year is to send the children a to send the children a certificate of completion um, that um, that acknowledges that they have completed their summer assignment in preparation for school. And um, again, if if your child is working on a book report or a math packet and you and it's motivating for them to say, like, bring this back to Mr. Becker, he's the one who assigned it to you. If that's motivating for them, Mr. Becker will receive that with glee and make a fuss when we do come back to school. So as you know, if that works for your children, please encourage them to bring it into us. But we will we'll do what we always do, which is to send the form. I want to make one small other statement that's on a different topic, where a couple of families said that they might be um, they might be thinking about having more than one child in the Zoom screen at once so they can connect with another family. And I don't have opinions about pods or not pods or social distancing here that's not my position what i do want to tell you is regardless of where your child is sitting i ask that every child is sitting on their own device in fact if it's your if it's your wish for your children to be sitting socially distant from each other on your back porch so that they have some socialization with with a with a neighbor they don't need to be in the same class as that person because it, it, I understand the idea that they want to have somebody that they're with in the physical space it can be a different class. They're going to have headsets and I get that, but I absolutely want to make a plug for having every child on their own device. And there are a number of reasons for this. First of all, on the, on the teacher experience side, we are looking at such small pictures of each child that if we start to see two and three and five children in one little screen, we are not going to be able to teach them. So we need every child's face to be as big as possible. And the way that we're doing that is we're making small groups so that the teachers can see the faces. But each child in their own box is going to make a difference just in terms of how large the, 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 the faces are. And then additionally, we are going to use our small pods and then break out into breakout rooms. So if I don't have every child on their own device, I will not be able to break them out into breakout rooms. So as you're thinking about this idea, I just, I just wanted to clarify that it's important that every child's on their own device zooming in on their own Zoom. Okay. Thank you. There's been several questions about school supplies. Um, if you could clarify the difference between the in-person lists and the at-home lists, as well as as far as art supplies or science supplies, will those types of things be given with more notice um, so that parents can have them readily available before um, gallons of milk are needed? Although no one's complaining about milk anymore post Yad Yehuda, so hooray. <laughs> so, uh for virtual school, it is recommended that you have the list that is listed as the at home. When we move to real school, um, our teachers like different colored folders and there's, they, they, there's no reason they can't use their in-school supplies at home. But once we come back to school, those in-school supplies are gonna stay in school. So we'll give you time to prepare for that, but that's the difference. Um, you know, when they do get into school and the teachers ask for a yellow folder, they want all the kids to have a yellow folder. There's no reason they can't use the yellow folder at home. Um, but once they need it in both places, 
you'll have to have a second folder and where the color might not matter. Um, was that the whole, I just lost my train of thought. Was that the whole question? The supplies for the specials. Oh, are yes. So I hear you and we will, I will work with the specials teachers to make sure that you have a list of the materials and supplies that you need um, at least a week ahead of time, if not, if not, if not even before that. So there will be no last minute runs for eggs or flour. Thank you. Um, I think that you spoke a bit about this, um, Mrs. Hanlock, the, the ideas for the sitter party and the kumash party, all those special programming. Um, the same would go for like the fifth grade Shabbaton. <laughs> Yes. Not that I'm asking. You know, we, we will try to create um, special experiences. Being in fifth grade is a really special year in the lower school. And Mr. Becker works, works very hard with the fifth graders as a group and with our student council to create special programming. And while we might not be on a Shabbaton, I guarantee you there will be something special for fifth grade. So give me a thumbs up, Mr. Becker. <laughs> Um, I think that I got all of the questions. Um, just one more thing about the, the supplies list. So tomorrow morning we'll be sending an email. It will include a recording to this town hall in case you missed anything or, or want to go back. Um, and we'll also have the links to the supplies lists in there as well. Um, our parents, parent involvement, will that be needed in special in the specials this year? Um, my hope, my hope is not, I, you know, I think again, that we want, we want the teachers to be responsible for educating the children and we're going to try and create programs and things that the children can do independently. Um, if we think that there's going to be something that might need a parent parental assistance, I will ask the specials teacher again to please, um, to please let you know ahead of time, but I, I respect that, um, the art teacher needs to be teaching art and you as a professional and whatever it is that you do in your home when you're working from home, you also need to be doing that. So we will try hard not to, to bother you with um, the watercolor painting. Um, there's a question about the Limude Kodesh classes and if they're going to be taught in English this year through Zoom. Um. Our Limude Kodesh classes will be taught the way that they are taught in live school. So we, we do our very best to instruct in Hebrew and then we turn over to English to clarify things that are challenging. In the upper elementary in fourth and fifth grade, we have a standalone Ivrit class that takes place in Hebrew and that will continue to take place in Hebrew in virtual school. And our non Ivrit classes are instructed in English with Hebrew text. So that will stay. Um, just a note about the supplies pickup on the on the August 31st. Um, we'll send out information on the logistics of that and the times. We'll do it by family. So if you have kids in different divisions, you'll be able to um, to get your stuff. Um, there is a question that is coming up a couple of times if there's potential for outdoor socially distanced class gatherings. I'm not sure if we were able to touch on that yet. Um, as it relates to virtual school or once we're in person? I would say in virtual school land. So again, I think what we're doing is um, we, are, we are waiting for the, the protocols and permissions to, to have small group gatherings in person outside. And it, it is our hope that that will happen. And when we have the right permission to do that, we will plan those. I think it's an integral part and a very important part of, of keeping the joy in school. And um, again, as soon as we have, as soon as we're given the green light to do that, we will uh, make an effort to have those, you know, to, to plan them. Um, I think we have one more question probably just about the schedule, going back to the daily schedule. Um, I know Mrs. Israel men mentioned that it's going to be more live instruction throughout the day. Um, there was also a question about, will it be the same schedule every day or will it differ day by day? 
The structure of the schedule will be what you saw. Um, we will still send you um, a schedule with links in it. It's interesting because uh, we have done a lot of work on opening the school live. And this week we learned that we're opening the school virtually. So although we've been working on our virtual plan too, we still have a few things that we're working on. And one of the things we're working on, we actually piloted and tested today, which was we were curious to see whether we could have a landing page for a class. So let's say um, grade 2A would have a Zoom landing page and the children would all land in there and then the teachers would come and go in order to instruct them, which would make it less challenging for you to navigate the schedule as parents, right? Your children would be there for the day and the teachers would come and go. And it has been a little bit, um, it's been something we're interested in, but it's, it's complicated by the different specials and the um, the possibility that one teacher, you know, needs to go out and is waiting for another supervisor to come in. And it's much like it happens in school, right? We need another adult to come in before one can go out. And so we were working on it. And some of it is about whether the technology works and some of it is whether the um, practically in our program, it's going to work. But we're, so we're ironing out a little bit of detail about the schedule itself, but the structure of the schedule is what you're seeing there. I think that those are all of the questions that I've seen. Um, I know Rabbi Dr. Kastan was hoping to um, say just a couple more words. I just wanted to say um, a major thank you to both uh, Mrs. Israel and Mrs. Hanloff and their entire unbelievable team. I mean, as, as, uh, as they mentioned, uh, you know, th this has not been an off summer for anybody. Uh, teachers have been um, coming into the building. Teachers have been enrolling in professional development. Teachers have been putting together plans, uh, both for in-person school and virtual school. Uh, just the amount of work and, and the uh, level of flexibility um, has been uh, nothing short of stellar. And you know, no, no matter what guidelines are thrown our way, uh, Susie and Rachel are the first ones to jump in with their teachers and say, okay, we're gonna figure this out because our utmost priority is to teach the children and we're going to find the best way to do that. Uh, it's an absolute honor to work with them. Uh, I know that all of our children are blessed uh, to have them leading our children and teaching our children. So I just want to say thank you so much for your work. Good night. <laughs> thank you very much everybody for joining us. Thank you. Bye, Latov.